On August 12, 2017, white supremacists and other members of the alt-right attended the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia to protest the city council's decision to remove Confederate monuments and memorials from public spaces, including this Robert E. Lee statue. In response, thousands of counter-protesters showed up, and many of them were prepared to get into clashes with the alt-right, who were also looking to fight. Unfortunately, state and local police were not prepared, and events quickly got out of control, turned incredibly violent, and became a low point in modern American history. And in what can only be described as an act of pure evil, 19 were injured and one woman was killed after a white supremacist rammed his car into a crowd of counter-protesters. That terrible incident happened at 1.45 p.m. An hour and 49 minutes later, the president, while appearing at a press conference to sign a health care bill for veterans, spoke briefly on the matter. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. So while the violent clashes were still taking place, the President of the United States acknowledged that it was happening and condemned the hatred, bigotry, and violence. It's a solid statement, and it should have been sufficient until he had more time or the proper venue to address it in more detail. But for the press, this wasn't good enough. First, they attacked him for saying that there was violence on many sides, even though that was true, and then they criticized him for not condemning, by name, the hate groups that were involved. As I said on Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And then the president said what should have been considered a definitive statement. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. But the next day, during a very contentious press conference, reporters insisted that it wasn't enough. Why did you wait so why long did not the last neo -Nazis? I didn't wait long. Why, why did I didn't wait long. So while the president didn't specifically say neo-Nazis in his initial statement, he did condemn their values. As I said on, remember this, Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And then I went on from there. Now, here's the thing as to, excuse me, excuse me, take it nice and easy. <laughs> I told you it was contentious. Honestly, if the press were not fake and if it was honest, the press would have said what I said was very nice. So the problem wasn't that Trump didn't condemn the violence or hatred or bigotry while it was still happening, by the way. It's that he didn't condemn white supremacy by name faster. That was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute, I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day. I, I will tell you something. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. And of course, Trump is right. While members of the alt-right were prepared to get into physical altercations, so were many of the counter-protesters. Trump is denouncing the violence equally. But reporters want you to think that violence coming from the left was somehow justified, at least even a little. Are you putting what you're calling the alt-left and white supremacists on the same moral plane? I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other, and they came at each other with clubs, and it was vicious, and it was horrible, and it was a horrible thing to watch. But there is another side. There was a group on this side. You can call them the left. You've just called them the left that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. And the president is correct. The press mostly focused on the white supremacists, but paid little attention to the counter-protesters that showed up with shields, clubs, bear mace, etc., who were ready to fight and or defend themselves. I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups, but not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. Those people were also there because they wanted to protest 
the taking down of a statue, Robert E. Lee. Okay, this is where it gets a little cloudy. The president is saying that there were people there who were not affiliated with the white supremacists or the counter protesters who were there to protest the removal of Confederate statues. But there doesn't seem to be evidence of vast amounts of these people attending, possibly because of the focus on the press on the neo-Nazis. However, there is some evidence. This August 16th, 2017 New York Times article features a woman named Michelle Piercy from Wichita, Kansas, who claims that she drove all night with a conservative group that opposed the planned removal of a statue of the Confederate General Robert E. Lee and had no interest in standing with Nazis or white supremacists. Now, it's unclear how many people were in that group or if any other groups went to Charlottesville for the same reason, and from what I can tell, there hasn't really been any other reporting on it, and any attempts to reach out to Miss Piercy have been met with deaf ears. Sorry, I tried. Should statues of Robert E. Lee stay up? I would say that's up to a local town, community, or the federal government, depending on where it is located. Are you against the Confederacy? Are you against the Confederacy? What an insane question. And people wonder why Trump calls them fake news. So, this is the point of the press conference that put Trump in hot water. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And with that, the press has, for years, been lying to you. They've taken one sentence out of a very rowdy exchange, completely out of context, so that they can paint Trump as some sort of Nazi sympathizer including ABC News. That now infamous moment in the wake of neo-Nazi protests in Charlottesville. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. But and notice that they left this part out. And I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. And ABC News did it again here. In one breath, he appears to defend neo-Nazis who fought with leftist groups in Virginia. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You see what they're doing, right? They only show one portion of a much larger statement, and people believe it because it's the only part that the media shows. And they know it's dishonest, but they keep doing it because it undermines Trump and paints him as a racist. You take somebody like Elaine Chao, who has worked in Washington for quite some time, for some honorable men and women. How does she stay working for a white supremacist? Not sure how one can be a white supremacist when they've totally condemned white supremacy. That's some crazy liberal logic for you. And if you think that the media are dishonest, let me introduce you to the biggest liar of them all, Democratic presidential nominee, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. And that's when we heard the words of the President of the United States that stunned the world and shocked the conscience of this nation. He said there were, quote, some very fine people on both sides. Very fine people on both sides? And unless you just tuned in, you know that this is a lie. But he's going to keep saying it over and over again because he thinks that you're stupid. It's also the third anniversary of that terrible day in Charlottesville. Remember what it felt like? to see those neo-Nazis, close your eyes. Sure, I'll play along. And those Klansmen, white supremacists, coming out of fields. Hang on, where are these fields exactly? Charlottesville is a college town completely devoid of any fields. So not to defend evil white supremacists in any way, but they did not come out of fields. I should point out that the scumbag murderer who ran down a bunch of protesters, well, his name was, wait for it, Fields. His last name is Fields. And that means that when Joe Biden closes his eyes, he sees imagery that didn't actually take place. Maybe he's thinking of the ending of Frankenstein, I don't know. You see these white supremacists coming out from under the rocks. He has yet once to condemn white supremacy, the neo-Nazis. He hasn't condemned the darn thing. Uh-huh, that's another blatant lie. Joe Biden is a liar, and if he's gonna lie about that, he'll lie about anything. 
And of course, former Clinton operative George Stephanopoulos just sits there and doesn't push back because he wants his audience to believe that President Trump is coddling white supremacists. But thankfully, not everyone falls for the media's BS. Why isn't it the easiest thing in the world for the president to say, neo-Nazis have no place in this country? He said it Monday. He didn't know the president. He didn't know the Because he just came out on TV. It just happened. Thanks for watching, sharing, and hitting that like button. If you want to support the channel, be sure to check out my merch store and buy an Asteroid 2020 t-shirt and some other fun stuff. And be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and hope to see you next time.